Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on broadcast today, coming to you from the Ahern Hotel in Las Vegas. Sig Rogich, president of Rogich Communications, we're talking international affairs. He's here for the whole show on all new Nevada Newsmakers. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world-leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, I'm delighted to welcome Sig Rogich in a continuing uh, interview here. This is part two of our interview. Um, uh, Sig is the president of Rogich Communications. Um, I wanted to start this one out with the mayoral race. We've had, by the time Carolyn Goodman steps down, 25 years of Goodman's as mayors of the city of Las Vegas. Um, your thoughts on, uh, if, if you want to name your favorite candidate, fine. If you don't, what, what do you feel are the qualifications, the qualities that the next mayor should have to lead Las Vegas? Well, that's a really good question because Las Vegas is in a disarray, you know, with this lawsuit. Uh, this is the Badlands lawsuit. The Badlands lawsuit. I, I think theoretically the city is bankrupt. You know, it could be a billion dollars. It could be monies of that size and scope, which is hard to believe. Uh, you know, you think about, think back, uh, let's say six years ago, North Las Vegas was on the, on the verge of bankruptcy. Now it's among the most booming cities in, in Nevada because they had good leadership there. I think John Lee did a great job as mayor and, and Ryan Juden, the yes. uh, city manager, is a star. We just did an interview with him a couple of days ago. Did you? Yes. He's a terrific guy, very smart. And um, they brought the city back to where it should be. And now they've got a surplus of close to $300 million. And Las Vegas is in the hole. So it's going to be very challenging for the next mayor to get a handle on all that stuff. And uh, it'll be a tight race, I believe that. And um, it's just one of those races that you wonder about the turnout model. And um, I'm not going to tell you who I like best. You know, I can tell you who I probably don't like, <laughs> but and I'm not going <laughs> to go there either. <laughs> but there's some good candidates. I, you know, I think Cedric Creer is a wonderful guy, and, and I think that uh, Shelley is, and, and I like uh, Victoria Seaman a lot. So uh, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to watch, but it's going to be a challenge in that city right now. Uh, the Las Vegas Review Journal put out the monies raised by the candidates today, and those are certainly the, the three with the most money to be able to spend. Mm -hmm. and, I'm not and surprised. Doesn't it come down to television once again? 
Yeah, but I think, you know, in a race for mayor, I think it comes down to being seen in public and going to all the events because, you know, it's kind of the home rule kind of feel. You know, you go to the little town hall meetings and you walk the neighborhoods and you go to the coffee shops and you, you're seen. So I think, it's, I think it needs probably more of that for a race for mayor these days than it did previously. All right, let's take a quick break and we'll come right back with Sig Rogic after this timeout. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Sig Rogich. He's the president of Rogich Communications. So we've got new properties opening on the Las Vegas Strip. Right. And yet, to me, forgive me, they are boring. They are the same thing we've seen over and over again. There are some spots, uh, like at Fountain Blue, for example, there's some beautiful restaurants and exciting images inside of those restaurants. But we're not catering to the next generation. I talked to Seth Shore of uh, uh, the downtown uh, Grand, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he said, it ain't broke, so you know there's nothing to fix. I'm paraphrasing there, but that's essentially what he said. <clears throat> but you know, I don't think that uh, Gen Z is gonna be excited about coming to play in our casinos if we don't change our game and up it. You know, it's a tough question to answer, but uh, if you look at the success stories around the world, you know, uh, from uh, Universal Studios to Disney to others, they're always upgrading. Mm -hmm. They're always finding something new. So the hotels have to be cognizant of that. I think more important than that, the hotels need to take care of their properties. I don't think they do a good job of that, a lot of them. When Steve Wynn was here, uh, Mike Ensign was here, I'm, I'm going to forget some, they used to have a percentage of EBITDA that went for CapEx to keep the rooms clean, the carpets new, the draperies changed. You don't see that anymore, you know, because we're run by REITs. Real estate investment trusts own the city. Right. They own the strip. Uh, all they care about, they're landlords. They don't put any money in the property. They get their monthly check. Uh, and these stock prices are valued based upon cash flow, and so they don't want to lose that potential so they don't put any money into the hotels like they used to. And I think they should. I think it should be mandatory. It's a privileged industry. It's a privileged license. And uh, they should respect the privilege. And many do. Don't get me wrong. I think Wynn is a good example of a property that takes care of itself. But you go to some other ones, they don't look the part. That's for sure. Uh, so I just got back from Singapore. Mm -hmm. and I visited uh, Resorts World. I've been to both uh, of them. Oh no, I know you've been very involved with that. 
Um, and they have a Universal Studios as part of their property. Right. Um, and the casino is just one piece, and it's not a very big piece. Uh, the Marina Bay Sands, it's a stunning property. I mean, beyond being an architectural icon, um, it's a stunning property in so many ways. And again, the gaming is a small portion of it. Now, of course, the gaming site is still substantial because of where they are located. Right. Um, but, but isn't that you know, what we should be doing. You know, uh, for example, Marina Bay, oh, uh, Singapore booked Taylor Swift for six nights under the deal that she could not play anywhere else in Southeast Asia. Now, that irritated all the countries around there because they couldn't get Taylor Swift, but it packed Singapore. Yeah, they all flew to Singapore because <laughs> they couldn't and see young, her in their own homeland. Right, and full of young people. It, uh, it's a different world in that regard, and you know, we have this thing called the internet, and internet gaming, and you know, all that goes with it. I think the next big, uh, if you want to call it scandal, is going to be how, how internet gambling, betting on, on pro and college sports plays out. Uh, it's an addictive component here in America and around the world, really. It's a huge money maker, don't get me wrong. And I like it. I mean, I like to bet on games, too, like everybody. But I think you're going to see some legislation coming down that's going to put uh, some restrictions on how, how uh, it can be governed. And I think it needs to be that way. I tell my friends, you know, if you look at the old cowboy movies in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, they all had a common, common theme. All the saloons had gambling halls in them. Right. You know, and, and a few other things. Yeah, they had a lot of other things. <laughs> but you know what happened? Everyone was going, was going broke. And so states outlawed gaming. They were losing all their discretionary income, families, you know, and so they got rid of it. And I think that internet uh, sports betting, collegiate betting, and all of it is fraught with a lot of peril. You know, you go to a young kid who's, uh, who's susceptible, let's just say, and tell him instead of scoring his 15 points a game, you want him to score two or four, and here's a million dollars if you do it. You know, it's tempting when you come from an area that doesn't have much income or, you know, you've grown up poor most of your life. It only takes one to have that kind of thing happen, you know, to change the dynamic. So I think those are the kinds of things you need to look for. Do you, do you see any appetite in Congress to do anything like that? I do. Really? Yeah, yeah I do. I've heard about it. I've talked to congressmen and senators who ask me about it, really. Not a lot, but I've had probably half a dozen that have raised the question with me. You know, they, they just think you need to watch it, you know. We had scandals in sports betting in the past, in collegiate games, you know. We right had here it. in Las Vegas, yes. Well, we didn't have it, I didn't see it here where anybody was accused of point shaving or fixing a game, but Kentucky had it, you know, in the 50s. They had a- Well, I was thinking of the running rebels. The Running Rebels never had a scandal like that, ever. They, uh, there was a bookmaker here who took a picture, but uh, the, the school was never, had never done anything like that, and we were never accused of that. Uh, maybe someone accused us, but no, it was not real. Yes. But in Kentucky, they had a seven-foot center. I think his name was Spivy. Seven-foot in 1955 or wow. 56 was a big guy, and they blackballed him from the NBA because of that. And then Michigan had its problems, if you recall, with the with the basketball team and there have been some others it's just too easy to change the dynamic in a basketball game or a football game if you've got somebody willing to do something wrong for a lot of money have you paid any attention to esports have you looked at that at all a little bit you know uh, i'm an old school guy so i can't i don't have time to learn about the, right. the new right. things that, that are coming on board okay well then let's change topics because I, I only get so much time with you and I don't want to waste any. Um, you uh, run an organization that coordinates business between the U.S. and China. Mm -hmm. How much of the noise between U.S. and China that's out there publicly is propaganda versus reality in terms of business? That's a good question and uh, a fair question. Uh, I think it's probably 50-50. You know, the, the fact of the matter is we do need each other to coexist. These hemispheres can't be isolated on an island, you know. Uh, we have in the areas of medicine, science, uh, uh, industrial goods, uh, food, we have to have some synergy there. And um, 
I just think that there's a lot of rhetoric, and I don't think tariffs is the way to go. I think, uh, you know, if you look at the history of tariffs in this world, they've never really worked. No, no. And yet, you know, you've got Biden and Trump out tariffing one another. You know, uh, they, uh, Biden put a 100% tariff on cars, and uh, two days later, Trump said, I'll put 200%. You know, that doesn't solve anything. Uh, and yet, we get our electric cars from China, basically, and uh, Biden wants everybody to drive an electric car, but he's going to put a 100% tariff on cars. None of it makes sense. So I think that there's still an ability to fix the relationship. I hope so, because it's, there's just too much at stake. There, there are people that, that have great fears about China and uh, in, here in the United States because of, of what they see sure. in, in their news. Um, and yet the reality is that this is an amazing country with the, you know, and we know so little about it here through our media, but if you do any research, you find all these giant cities all over China. You know, it's an amazing city, uh, I mean t country. I've been to China probably 50 times in my life, literally, and I've been all over the country, and, and uh, the, the cities are clean, sparkling in most cases. Uh, the transportation models are sensational. You know, we talk about our first high-speed train coming into play. You know, that's old hat for China. Right. On the other hand, China can do things we can't do here, on, and it's not fair to us uh, because you, they don't have an environmental protection agency per se. They care about the environment, but they build a train, high-speed train, from Beijing to Macau in two and a half years. They approved it demolished the homes in the way, put the tracks up, built the train in two and a half years. I was part of the, and I still am part of the high-speed train here. It took us 13 years to get approvals. Yes. And that doesn't include the financial side of it. We couldn't, you know, so it's all relative and, and um, they're dic they have a dictatorship, as you know. I think our big worry has to be that uh, Russia and China and Iran really become cohesive. Uh, because they all have an agenda that's not real healthy for us. That's why the Ukraine is so important. Uh, it's more important, in my opinion, than uh, anything in recent memory. Uh, all right, but, but for China specifically, um, don't they need us as much as we need them? Yeah, they do. I, I mean, from an economic point of view, and, and the population of China is not silent. I mean, we think they are, but they're not. And if people don't, get, don't have jobs and don't have food on the table, then President Xi could be gone. That's it's very possible, you know, those things can happen. They made a big mistake with the one-child policy, you know. And, uh, <laughs> Didn't they? <laughs> and and uh, they're, <clears throat> they're paying the price for that. Uh, but if you go to, uh, I was in a place called Hangzhou, uh, it's a city where Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger met with the Chinese when they, when they had the accord in 1972. And uh, it's a small city of probably seven and a half uh, billion people, you know, some crazy, I mean million, million, yeah, million people. Say. And uh, it's a stunning place, it's on a lake. You know, you, you, you see people kayaking around the lake. You see uh, kids and this, this colonnade of activity going on and people having picnics and music and all of the above. And yet it bustles, you know, it's hustling and bustling and cafes are full of people and music is streaming around and, and that's just one city. Shanghai is very similar to that. It's about two hours away. And um, it's, a, it's a work in progress, and the problem is that uh, nobody has a moment to pause and reflect anymore, like I said earlier. And so we say something and they respond in kind instantly and vice versa. It used to be it took a while to digest something, right, and by right. then cooler heads prevailed. But now our whole society is instant communication. We do it with our families, with our husbands and wives, our children. And uh, we've all written emails we wish we wouldn't have written. <laughs> right. And we've all sent texts we wish we would have said a little better, you know. And now we've got governments doing it. And uh, it, needs, it needs, the world needs to take a deep breath. But I think also Americans in particular 
need to look at the whole world. There are vast areas of the world that we have no knowledge about. South America, let's start there. Uh, Asia, uh, Africa. I mean, these are all really important places, but if you look at the national news coverage, it's pretty close to zero. Listen, you know, uh, Russia is making a big move into Africa because mm. of the minerals and the opportunities that come with some of the plant life that's there that creates medicines and so forth. As is China. As is China. China owns the port, you know, in uh, the eastern seaboard up near Ivory Coast and then Nigeria. And, and, uh, and these tribe, tribal activities that are going on there, you know, are with handouts. You've got the Wagner Group, which is still prevalent and active in, in the northern parts of Africa. Uh, we haven't paid enough attention to it. In another 50 years, they could be the superpower in the world because they have all the natural resources they need. You know, they can grow what they want, they can produce what they want, and they've got this significant population base to do it. They just kicked the French out right. of, what, Niger, I think, uh, after how many years? And uh, that's a good example, you know, uh, and somebody filled the void, and in this case, it's Russia. So the world is homogenized, if you want to put it that way, and you're right about us having to pay more attention to other countries that we didn't have to in the past. I hope we do. We can't be an isolationist nation anymore because we all need each other too much. You know, we get things from Germany that that uh, they get from Russia and <laughs> from, from LNG to oil to minerals to medicines to all of the above. The, the world is way too connected for it to be split. It is connected for sure. Yes. All right, let's take another break and we'll come right back. More with Sig Rogich after this timeout. Welcome to the Winnemucca Big R. Hi, I'm John Walker. Welcome to Big R Love Lock. Hi, I'm Rich Martin. Welcome to Fallon Big R. My name is Braden. Welcome to Big R Friendly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Big R Sparks. the open road with a truckload of cash free play in one of three luxury travel trailers during the $250,000 travel time giveaways. Thousands in weekly giveaways plus $7,500 in grand prizes guaranteed. And a new travel trailer or $35,000. Now at the Carson Valley Inn. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Sig Rogich. Um, you talked about the high-speed train, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to let that just go at that, because this has been the most incredible journey. It's gone through so many name changes in different companies, and finally, Brightline, with your help, and I know the Marnells involved as well, um, it, it's finally come to fruition, it appears and it looks like it's going to be an unbelievable project. It could be sensational. Tony Marnell is a visionary here. You know, he's, he's just a visionary anyway. You know, he's built great properties, built half the strip, you know, uh, and so I think it has a chance for success. Believe me, it's gonna cost more money than they've been given, and they're gonna go back to the federal government, in my opinion, and get it, you know, but it could be the beginning of, of many things because there's also 
an organization in, that includes Arizona and Utah and New Mexico that have teamed together. Once we reach the Victorville turnoff, then Phoenix can come right to Victorville and come into Vegas or go into Los Angeles. Same is true with Salt Lake City and others. And so I think it has the potential to be the catalyst to a, a regional high-speed transportation network. Finally, the United States gets to catch up. We were in Italy a couple of years ago riding the high-speed trains there, and we're like, why is this not in our country? It's unbelievable. They're, they're unbe it's such a fun way to travel, too. I love it. Yes. Well, so. the only thing is you get whiplash with, if you look, trying to look at the scenery, you just have to keep well, turning you know, your head very quickly. My involvement includes Florida, too. You know, I'm part of that. I have a very small part uh, of uh, Florida and this bright line piece here. And Florida is a huge success, you know, and so that's a good example of what can happen. Well, and I was excited that they bought the land uh, for the terminus here in Las Vegas. Yeah. And so, uh, and there's a lot more to it than just being a train station. I agree. So, Shouldn't we mention Peter Guzman before we close off here? Uh, no, we're out of time. Unfortunately, we're out of time. I would love to mention Peter Guzman, <laughs> but you know, when you get to the end of the show, you just got to go. I just wondered, you know, if we... I, he's a very nice man. And, and we have him on the show all the time. Yeah. Unfortunately, no well, time to talk about Well, off work he it. is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real. It's growing. And it needs your help. Go online to CarsonCityGreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Turn your clunker into a caddy during the Cadillac and Cash giveaways at Tamarack Casino. Weekly cash drawings including 5,000 cash and one top prize of $10,000. Win the grand prize of a Cadillac CT4 or 40,000 in cash. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suites. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers coming to you from the Ahern Hotel in Las Vegas. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. You can also download podcasts of the show wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.